Last year in 2020, we saw record amounts of stimulus and spending to alleviate some of the um, the pain that Americans were seeing as a result of COVID. Now, unemployment it still remains high. 900,000 was the latest reading for the unemployment jobless claims. And so with, with this high of a number, Dr. Paul, what is a policy that the government should take to bring this number down? Because clearly stimulus had limited effect. Well, the, the proper policy is, is really tough under these circumstances because the uh, proper policy in a free market is just radically reduce the size and scope of government. But then you say, well, what would happen? Would the checks quit? Well, if you were gonna do the right thing, they would have never been started because you'd have to accept the principle that creating money and creating debt does not create more wealth. People think if they just print a lot of money and pass it out, the country will be wealthier. But I just think uh, whether it's since the uh, uh, recession 10 years ago or, or what's gone on uh, in this past year, people haven't gotten wealthier uh, by uh, the government just passing out more money. So to do that is politically not feasible because people would object because you could they'll point out, well, he, he saved this and saved that. But, he, but also what was created there was the debt went up, but we still dealing with thousands, if not tens of thousands of people out of work and little businesses that they don't look like they're uh, you know going to open up soon. So we have this combination, even before coronavirus hit, uh, my turn was the inevitable downturn of the economy due to the outrageous spending and interference uh, with interest rates by the Federal Reserve, and there has to be a correction. And uh, it started to correct, and then the coronavirus hit, and everybody panicked. And I would say that one thing for sure is that uh, President Trump was very, very effective and uh, influencing the Federal Reserve. They all do it. Uh, most of the time it's a little bit behind the scenes and you know, get the interest rates down a little bit. But no, uh, President Trump was very, uh, very adamant about it. And I'd have to concede, well, on the short run, you know, it sort of helped some, helped some people. It certainly helped Wall Street. That, and that, that's really uh, how monetary policy is designed. Uh, they, they are the uh, plunge protection team for Wall Street. Very, very effective. But the reason why you can't endorse it, it's just blowing the bubble bigger. And since the new money doesn't create wealth, there has to be an adjustment. The debt will be paid for. It's not going to be paid for by Americans working harder and sending more money to Washington and uh, running the debt down. That, that's not going to happen. But real debt has to be liquidated in order to ever get back on our feet again, in, in a true sense of the word. And it gets liquidated by inflation. And that's what they're working on. And they've, it, it to me amazes me that our government, especially the Federal Reserve, announces that the policy is deliberate devaluation of the money and sticking it to the poor people and anybody who suffers from prices going up. Oh, well, we have to get prices going up at 2% a year. Well, they achieved that, and I think it's a lot worse than that. And when it really hits, they'll have no, no control of it. See, that makes no sense whatsoever. Well, how do you think we'll be able to pay off our debt, both domestic and foreign debt to countries like China, for example? Uh, one, of the, one of the things I've heard from economists is that the government wants inflation because that will just erode the value of the debt away. Do you agree with that? That's, that's the only choice they, they have. Uh, our government is not going to stiff them. They're, they're not going to go default. There'll be some of that in the free market. Take student loans. The students are, uh, have been told that they're never going to have to pay. They're not, and they're, they're backing off. Why, why pay it? Because we're going to get excused, especially under Biden. So that, that debt will uh, you, you know, be liquidated in the sense that they won't owe it anymore. But uh, since the government guaranteed it, it's going to add, add to the national debt. So the debt is going to be there. And the only way I see that this debt will be liquidated, which is absolutely necessary uh, over a period of time to get the market working again, in a true sense of the word, and that, that is going to be through liquidation of debt by inflation. They're working hard at it. And the tragedy is, is they're going to be successful about it. I, every day I get another article of prices have gone up, steel prices have gone up, and they've never admitted to the prices that have, have gone up before. And uh, this whole thing, if they don't restore sanity to uh, the most important price 
in the whole economy, the economy, and that is the is the cost of borrowing, interest rate. Interest rates are very, very important if you want to have any market economy. You know, in a Soviet type system, they don't have a market rate of interest, and they also had no production, and the system had to collapse. But uh, now we don't have that, and that's why I think the country is going to get much, much poorer, and uh, we will have to someday go back to the idea that uh, savings and market interest rates uh, helps decide what consumers do, what investors do, uh, what entrepreneurs do, and uh, instead of having all this malinvestment. But right now we're under the gun. The debt has to be liquidated, but along with the debt, the malinvestment, all the mistakes made, the, the six trillion dollars we just spent, you know, bailing out people, that went and was a temporary reprieve. And uh, we're, we're addicted to this type of economy, and that's why they can't stop, and that's why it's going to get much worse. But we have a job, those of us who are in the business of spreading a message, as you are, to, to talk about sensible economics. And uh, hopefully they'll come to their senses. Uh, I think the collapse will come. It's going to surprise everybody because I was really a surprise what happened to the Soviet system. I was in the service in the 60s and watched the Cold War very closely. And then all of a sudden, boom! It, it disappeared. So let's hope and pray for our system to change uh, as peaceful as that. Well